Disney Glam Fam, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Jossim, AKA Awesome Jossim, and I wanna thank you for clicking on this video. On this channel, we like to celebrate Disney, beauty, fashion, and lifestyle. So if you like any or all of those things, consider bippity boppity bopping that subscribe button, ring the bells of notification so you're instantaneously notified when I post something new, and please leave a big old thumbs up at the end of this video if you liked it all the way through. Now today I am so excited because if you couldn't tell by the title, we are celebrating my one year on YouTube. Woo! <laughs> yes, it has been one year of me creating content and diverting into this beautiful Disney community here on YouTube. First and foremost, I wanna say thank you so much to each and every single one of you who really inspire me to just be myself wholeheartedly and share with you guys my love for Disney, my passion for fashion, my creative side through makeup artistry, and just my different adventures in the park. Thank you all so much. You all are so incredibly kind. You have become more than friends. You're almost like family. That's why I announce you guys as my Disney Glam fam in every single video, and I truly appreciate you for that. In this video today, I figured we would step back. I'm just gonna do a simple get ready with me for this sparkly, fun, festive look right here, inspired by this super cute sweater that I got at World of Disney, um, and just share with you guys some answers to different questions you asked me over on my Instagram page. Now, if you aren't following me on Instagram, I'm gonna leave that linked down in the description box below. Definitely check it out. I post so much other content there in terms of photos, fashion. I also story on that site, so you'll see a little bit more day-to-day -day versus here on YouTube, which is typical videos. Now, my one-year anniversary was on January the 8th, not too far back, um, but I'm just having the opportunity to sit down, answer your questions, do this makeup look, and share this video with you guys. So without further ado, let me showcase this super easy and simple get ready with me as I answer the questions you provided to me over on my Instagram. Let's go. All right, so jumping right in, we're gonna go ahead and start out by moisturizing our skin. I'm using the H2O Oasis Hydrating Treatment. This was the specialty Little Mermaid um, anniversary edition. I like this because it really plumps and moisturizes the skin. So anytime you do makeup, you wanna make sure that you hydrate your skin because especially if you're like me and you go for a full glam and you're layering products, it's gonna tend to dehydrate the skin, so. Cause I'm a dude and I have stubble, I need to use an orange color corrector to counteract the green undertones. So I tend to just apply that all over my beard area, sometimes on the sideburn area, and you can even use it like under the deepness in your eyes. I'm not gonna do that today only because the concealer I have is a very heavy duty concealer, so I don't want to cake up under my eyes. All right, so the first question was actually a question I feel a lot of people asked me, and that was, why did you start your YouTube channel? Some I'm pretty. Duh. No, I'm just teasing. Honestly, I wanted a space in which I can share with um, different people, like my tips and tricks with fashion, with makeup, mostly makeup, um, and honestly just sharing on my Disney experiences. I had been watching Disney YouTubers for quite some time, and I was like, I live by the parks. Like, I know so many tips and tricks that I can provide to people. Um, I wanted to share in on my experiences, since I know a lot of my friends can't personally make it all the way over to Orlando and just share in like on those park adventures so that was a big factor for me when I decided to start my YouTube channel um, and again mostly just to have another creative outlet like I love doing makeup and I had so many people asking me like how do you do this how do you do that like can you show me can you teach me can you do my makeup and honestly I was like well it's hard because I work full-time and when I'm not at work I'm always at Disney so I was like let me create some videos that kind of focus in on that 
And then it just exploded from there. I started doing unboxings, I started doing like treat videos, makeup videos, uh, fashion videos, so on and so forth. So really it was just to put all of my creative ideas in one space and share it with all of my friends and family and with you guys. Now I'm going in with the uh, Poreless Putty Primer from e.l.f. The next question is, what are the worst and best things about YouTube? Ooh, okay. Hmm. Honestly, I I don't think there's a lot that's bad about YouTube. Except now in these dang shorts, they're like taking over my feed. No, I really feel like there's not a lot that's like bad with YouTube. I mean, the only thing that I can say that's almost a negative is like you're putting yourself out there candidly and you have to be open for interpretation meaning there's going to be people that like you there's going to be people that don't like you and one of my friends here on youtube actually told me you need to be prepared for the day that you get like a thumbs down on your video and, I, and she knows i'm an emotional person and i i tend to try to make sure that everyone likes me or at least um you know, we have an understanding, but she said, you just have to remember that you're putting yourself out there to the world and basically some people are gonna like you, some people aren't. So I feel like that's kind of the worst part. You really don't know what direction your video is gonna be viewed. Um, and sometimes it comes with the negative. You might get a negative comment, you might get a dislike, but it doesn't really reflect you or your character. It more so is just motivation to continue doing what you're doing because it's just sparking controversy for people, whether they like you or they don't. And that is what it is. Now, the best thing about YouTube, hands down has to be the amazing people and the connections that I've created. I have made so many amazing friends on this platform and I honestly feel like if it wasn't for me doing YouTube, like I wouldn't feel more well-rounded in like my love for Disney and the aspirations just because there's so many people that share that with you and I feel like support you and can understand and empathize and just help motivate you to be a better you um, even though you might have like different likes than everyone else like within your circle. So now I'm going in with my foundation. I'm just using the Double Wear from Estee Lauder. It's one of my all-time favorites. And I am using a Morphe Dense Packing Brush. Whoa, that's a lot, sis. Slow down. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of put that all over. Definitely, this has been a year on YouTube. I have learned so much about myself. I have learned how strong I am, how confident I can be. Um, and honestly, I feel like a lot of it has come from being very candid with myself. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, like I'm very much a people pleaser and sometimes it's, it's very hard when you put yourself out there candidly and just kind of leave it for interpretation for whatever people may think or see or view of you. Um, so definitely this has been a very growing year. It's been a year unlike any other. I can't wait to take this into 2021 and just continue my passion um, and showing and sharing with you guys all of my different experiences. Oh my God, I'm talking like this. The next question is, what are your favorite videos to film? This one is so hard because again, I have so many interests, so I feel like every video is my favorite video to film. I have yet to film a video with like a friend. No, I take that back. I've done a few in the parks with like friends, AKA Ashley, Pixie and Magic, but I just mean like sitting in my room and just going back and forth on like challenges. I think that would be really cool to do this year on YouTube. Definitely if you wanna see that, let me know down in the comment section below and what Disney YouTuber would you want to see me collaborate with? Um, I think some of my favorite videos to do are of course makeup because it's my passion, it's what I enjoy doing, and I love sharing, like like I mentioned, tips and tricks with people. So that's a very fun aspect for me to, to film. I will say they're very hard to edit. So if I don't get many of them up, I do apologize. It's mostly because it's, it's very hard to like edit 
Okay, so jumping in, I like to start out my highlight with a yellow corrector, only because for me and my complexion, I'm at that very like middled, olive, almost neutral gray tone that I like to bring a little bit of warmth back to my complexion. So I lay down a light layer of this yellow corrector to help illuminate and brighten under my eyes. You can do this with a concealer, but I like the yellow tone so that way it just really warms up under the eyes for me. Ooh, she's running out. I'm gonna go buy makeup. Ooh, would that be a video you guys wanna see? Like shopping for makeup? Let me know. Next question is top five Disney sidekicks. Oh, this is difficult. Okay, so I'm just gonna go with the five that jumped to my mind initially. I'm such an indecisive person. I'm a Gemini, guys, so I'm very indecisive. Um, literally, like, I like to be a leader in certain aspects, but then also, like, I'm so indecisive that it's hard to be. Um, but I'm just gonna say the top five that come to mind. The first one is Pua because he is so stinking cute. I absolutely love, love, love Pua. I wish there was more Pua merch, but I haven't come across that. Um, Miko and Flit, I kind of feel like they're a team duo. Obviously Pocahontas is my very favorite princess. And I think that both of them help to create like character dynamic in the movie. I'm also gonna say Genie because literally the story of Aladdin would be incomplete without Genie. And he definitely teaches Aladdin valuable lessons about being true to you and um, like friendship. So that's really cool. Now I'm going in with the e.l.f. concealer. This is the camo concealer. It's super duper full coverage. Um, but for the look that I'm going for today, I just kind of want to have like flawless under skin and then like a light, more colorful eye. So I am just putting that like right in the center of my face and buffing it out. Oh my God, I completely forgot I was answering a question. Jocelyn, get with it. All right, so I said Pua, Flit and Miko, uh, Genie. Who else, who else? I really think like Flounder and Sebastian as well are some amazing characters, especially Sebastian. Although like his intention was kind of to like fulfill and help King Triton, um, with watching his daughters, he also felt like the need and obligation to really just support Ariel and her dreams and aspirations. Like even though he knew he was defying King Triton, he was trying to do right by both. Um, and that's definitely amazing. And also Flounder because he was always there for her and he's just so cute, he's such a little guppy. And last but not least, hmm. Ooh, I think Mushu. Mushu is definitely an honorable mention. He literally goes to war with Mulan and helps her like realize her potential, even though he's not even like the family garden that was supposed to go with them. But he learned, she learned, they grew. Awesome experience. All right, so next up I am taking this Awesome. It's this like Rimmel London powder that's all half broken. Again, I told you I need to go shopping for makeup. Um, but I use this as my setting powder. Um, if you guys have recommendations for your favorite setting powders, let me know down in the comment section below. I'm definitely in need of something. I just don't know what yet. Like, I don't know if I want a foundation powder, setting powder, um, or what have you. I know I do want something with color. So that has been a challenge to find. So I kind of use this all over the perimeters of my face. I don't necessarily do it in the areas that I've highlighted with concealer, only because I go in with a translucent to help illuminate and brighten. So now that we have done that, <laughs> now that we've got makeup everywhere, including my face, um, we are going to go in with my Chanel Powder Universal and just illuminate under the eyes. We are back and we are back with my beauty blender. So the next question is, 
Where is your family from? I'm just gonna use this powder to illuminate underneath my eye. I like to go for a more exaggerated illumination. You don't necessarily have to do this. This is like a baking technique. But again, because I'm a man in makeup, I need to just really soften up my features, especially when I go in with different eye makeup and contouring makeup and things like that. I also like to take my bake right down to the nostril area. I just noticed this is an area on me that typically will break um, the fastest. What I mean by break is uh, your foundation like separates. It breaks the fastest because I'm always smiling, so I get like those little lines and, and the foundation tends to separate, but anywho. This is not a makeup tutorial, this is just a get ready with me. Why are you trying to be so super duper like analytical and like trying to <laughs> So where is my family from? I am originally from Los Angeles, California. That's where I was born. I am a West Side baby, but I have lived most of my life here in Orlando, Florida. Um, now in terms of nationality or background, uh, my mom is Puerto Rican and Guatemalan. So I am Latino from my mother's side. And my father is from Kuwait. So I am also Middle Eastern. So I am Latino and Arabic and I am exotic and I am mixed and people never really know where I'm from. But I love it because I love culture and diversity. So it's super exciting to have that and also to dive in and learn a little bit more about like my background and my family and my culture. Going into our tardiest contour palette, I am just gonna alternate between some of the bronzers and the contour color to warm up my complexion. The next question is, where do you find inspiration for your V? For your videos? <laughs> Where do you find inspiration for your videos and creativity? So basically, I find it from everywhere. Like, I love um, looking at art. I love reading inspirational um, quotes, things like that. Um, other influencers, they inspire me. I just, I'm a very creative person, so I draw my inspiration from everywhere. Sometimes I'm even inspired just by, again, my love for Disney and kind of bringing that to life in a new or a different way so um, again I get all of my creative inspiration everywhere from family from friends um, from being put up to challenges like a lot of the things that helped me get through 2020 was all of the online challenges that the Disney community hosted whether it be for fashion or for beauty so that is a very super cool and unique outlet um, that helped to really challenge me and help to um, make me think outside the box in terms of creativity. And going back in with our facial duo fiber brush, I tend to just kind of buff all of that together. With contour, you always want to like buff it up and back in soft circular motions. So if you pull it down, it's going to make your face look a little bit more elongated. So I like it to keep it like right and defined so it pops up the cheekbones. All right, looking good, looking good. Moving on from complexion, I'm gonna come back to that. I am going into my eyes, so I'm just gonna kind of start to define and fill in my eyebrow shape. The next question is, what is your most treasured Disney item you own? This one is so hard. I honestly feel like Every piece that I have in my collection is something super duper special, super duper sentimental and important. But if I had to choose one, I actually haven't shared it. Let me find it. I have it here on my display. I feel like this Disney bound book is probably my most cherished um, item at the moment. And I'll tell you why. Again, jumping into the Disney community, I was able to express creativity through um, fashion, through park vlogging, through uh, makeup, and I had the opportunity of actually being featured in this book, which is an official Disney publication book, um, and it was celebrating people in the community who love to bound as characters, and I am on page, what is it, 52, 53, where is it? Hold on, I'm gonna find it for you guys. Here we go, 58. Are you guys ready? 
I was selected to represent Aladdin. Now, hands down, he's probably my favorite prince ever, so it was super duper cool, but they selected one of my photos to be shared in this publication and just talk about and showcase how to Disney bound as our favorite street rat. So as you can see on this page, it showcases like a more feminine version of the outfit where you have like these nice tan uh, shorts, a cream style crop top, a cute frilly purple vest, all of the different accessories that make up Aladdin. And then as you can see, I am right there showcasing my interpretation of an Aladdin Disney bound. So this was super duper special, sentimental because Honestly, I have loved Disney for so long. I have invested so much of my time and money into Disney that it was super cool to kind of see it come full circle and be published in a Disney publication um, and just showcase me and my style and my terms of magic. The next question is, is your bank balance screaming since you joined the YouTube Disney community? Girl, you already know. Um, no, I'm just teasing. Um, so definitely it is easy to fall into um, different sorts of spending habits in the Disney community. Obviously with Disney, there comes Disney merch. Um, and not only can you get like official Disney merch through Disney itself, but you have all of the fans creating like super cool small shops that celebrate um, all of your favorites in unique and different ways. Definitely, I have to say, of course, um, I am a shopper and I love finding different pieces to add to my collection uh, in terms of Disney. But I will say more recently this year especially, I did say I am going to be more mindful to where I am spending. Um, so less swaps, um, less need items, and more like what is really gonna spark joy. And recently that has been like Jim Shores because they're figurines that I display. So not only are they like collectibles for me, but they also um, add a sense of decor to my backdrop. And what I love about it is it really just kind of re-inspires me when I look at them about magic and inspiration and just continuing to like fight for your dreams. So I know it sounds super duper cheesy and cliche, but honestly like those do um, very much so excite me and that's why I am still purchasing them. Um, ears, they have been very fun because they also spark creativity. When I do makeup looks, I typically will be inspired by ears like today. Um, but I am again trying to be more mindful to my money. So this year I am definitely working on budgeting versus just kind of nonchalant. Now we're gonna be jumping into the eyes. Um, to start out, I'm actually gonna be using this Princess Couture Cosmetics palette. It is stunning. So it has different variations of pinks and shimmers and glitters. I feel like it's just gonna kind of pull in the color story of my sweater. Um, so to start out with though, I am going to be jumping into a secondary palette just because it has more of a neutral tone for me to set my eyes with. So this is the Bomb Cosmetics and I'm just gonna jump into this nice um, taupey cream color. Best advice you can give to someone wanting to start a channel. Okay, so before I jump into this, I am going to direct this comment because I think it's so super duper incredible. Um, thank you so much for asking that. My biggest advice to anyone wanting to start a channel is like Nike, just do it. Honestly, I had been back and forth for so long on creating video content for YouTube. And I think I had been in the works of like gearing up for YouTube for about two years or maybe three years before then. And honestly, time is the only thing we cannot get back. And I wish it would have started sooner because I know I would have been at a different level in my career in terms of YouTube right now. But I am so incredibly excited and happy that I started this channel a year ago and I cannot wait to see what the future like holds. So the biggest advice is start your YouTube when you initially feel it. Go ahead and just do it. 
Secondly, I would say make sure you just stay true to you. It's easy to fall into kind of the lineup of what you think people are gonna want or expect from you, but I think it's so important to just stay genuine and true because that's what people like, that's what people enjoy, and I feel like that's what really creates the community um, of your YouTube channel and your YouTube space. So I really hope that I am doing that here on my platform. Um, and I appreciate each and every single one of you who continue to support, who continue to like, comment, and just inspire me every day to bring to you guys the content that I want to share. So thank you, thank you, thank you. That's my biggest advice. If you're thinking about doing a YouTube channel, you are more than welcome to slide into my DMs on Instagram or message me down below. I will give you all of the amazing advice and feedback that I've experienced so that way you have kind of some inspiration or insight on what to expect. This look is gonna be very easy. I'm just gonna be kind of blending all these different pinks to create like a soft smoky look, and then I'm gonna enhance it with the holographic glitter. The next question is, if you could be any character at the Disney parks for a day, who would you be and why? I know I've answered this in another video before, and my answer still stays true. I would be Sorcerer Mickey. Why? I want to be in Fantasmic so bad, and I want to be up there on the hill going, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. I just feel like that would be so inspiring, so exciting, and just a unique experience. Honestly, too, Mickey is like homeboy. He is the mouse that started it all, and I think it would just be special to kind of live out creating memorable experiences for people visiting the parks. Princess Couture Cosmetics is actually a small shop, um, not small shop, excuse me, it's an indie brand that my friend Rachel over on Instagram started. Definitely check her out. I'll leave this listed down in the description box below to her channel and to where you can purchase your own. She has so many different color story palettes, but this one definitely was unique because I don't have anything that's like full bright neon pink. So this is super duper cool. Now taking that color, you're gonna wash it all over your lid. And then I like to take it and just softly buff underneath the eye. What is one goal you wish to accomplish this year? Now, I'm assuming this is in terms of YouTube. So one goal that I did set for myself is to showcase and share more elements of the Disney Resort on my channel. Now, many of you don't know that I actually went to school and studied hospitality management. So um, I love like everything that involves the hotels and I love the Disney resorts. So definitely this year I want to share um, all of the different elements that is the Walt Disney World Resort and be able to like experience it and give some non-biased opinions about it. Um, in terms of like amenities, the decor, the design, the customer service, things like that. So I am amping up for a few trips that I planned this year, a trip announcement. At the end of this month, I'm actually gonna be staying at the Art of Animation with one of my near and dear friends, Erica Heath. Uh, she is coming down for a weekend of fun at the parks and we decided what better way to celebrate and enjoy because we didn't get to see each other for Christmas, our Christmas. Um, by just doing a staycation here at the park. So we're gonna be staying at Art of Animation. I'm definitely gonna vlog that trip. I am going to share with you all of the elements of that resort. And hopefully if it gets the positive feedback in the near future, I can book another and hopefully do it again for you guys. I know for sure on my birthday, I would like to do like a mini staycation. I don't know which resort just yet. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know down in the comments comment section below. Ready? I love this pink. Now in terms of personal goals, I think one of the biggest things I want to do is push myself from my comfort level. I have been feeling a little bit stagnant in life um, just with things that I've been doing more recently in terms of work and life. Um, and I want to shake things up. So it's very difficult because when you're someone who's very like ritualistic, you kind of get stuck in your, your movement, your groove. But I think one thing that I have learned from a few different people within the last few years is just challenging yourself and your abilities. So I'm going to try to not be scared of potential 
and really kind of live a little bit more sporadically in terms of, you know, trying new things, being more ambitious, all of those kind of things. I hope I don't sound like I'm rambling, you guys. I'm sorry if I am. Jumping in to this super bright neon pink color and we are going to be placing it all over the mobile lid. Oh, look at that color. So pretty, it kind of coordinates to the sweater. Yo, that is bright. All right, so we're just gonna diffuse that. What has been the most rewarding aspect of starting your channel? Definitely, hands down, it has been connecting to the community, not only through subscribers, but most importantly, creating friendships that have been so dynamic that they almost feel like family to me. That's been such an amazing thing. I know I can reach out to certain individuals to help inspire me, motivate me, and just give me some sane advice. And honestly, I have created some amazing friendships here that I feel like is gonna last a lifetime. So YouTube has given me that opportunity to create those friendships, and most importantly, just be true to who I am, showcase who I am, and just share in on what makes me happy and hopefully in turn it makes other people happy. So with this look we are going to pop on a little bit of glitter and we're just going to focus it right on the inner tear duct. crazy right now, but that's because I need to jump in, put my lashes, my liner, my mascara. I'm gonna do that off camera because I can never do it on camera, and I will be right back. All right, so lashes and liner are on. Went a little Amy Winehouse on it today, but yellow. So I'm going to finish up my complexion with some blush. I am going into the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. It is one of my all-time favorites. Um, I like blush, but I like that this one is a little bit softer, a little bit more natural, especially when I do like looks like these that are very like intense on the eyes. Um, I don't like to draw too, too much attention to the cheek area, but of course to give a little bit of life back to the complexion. I usually will take it and kind of fill in my temples a little, but not the nose, um, just to give some life and dimension back to my complexion. Favorite Disney snack. Y'all know a boy can eat, and honestly, I love everything at the Disney parks. It's so hard, especially when there's festivals. Um, I'll leave something linked up above or down below so you guys can see like the different snacks I've tried. I've gone with my friend Ashley, AKA Pixie and Magic. That's kind of become our little thing to try different festival treats or holiday treats. Um, so if you want to see more of those, please let me know down in the comment section below. Um, but I can say probably my favorite snack is the Norwegian school bread. Oh yes, the Norwegian school bread. It's like this beautiful fluffy bun. It's sweet with a little bit of like a cardamom flavor. There's like a Bavarian cream filling, some toasted coconuts all over the top and a sweet glaze like drizzled over it. Oh my God, it's so good. My favorite thing to do is purchase them at the parks the night that I'm there, take it home and actually enjoy it the next morning with my coffee. It's so good, it's so filling, it is mwah, amazing. The next question is, what video was your favorite to make? This was hard because I don't, like I told you, I love um, just sharing like my love for Disney and things like that. I think out of everything I've ever done, probably my all-time favorite video to make was the Characters Choose My Makeup tutorial. That one was so much fun. This was pre-COVID uh, when they had all of the characters still meeting and greeting guests. 
And I just took my makeup that day, two of each thing, like two lipsticks, two powders, two foundations, what have you. And I went and visited so many different characters. The experience was unlike anything else. The memories that I made was so much fun. And just seeing the characters a little outside of their element and trying to like justify why they chose certain things was super duper fun. Um, I'll leave that linked up above. That was like one of my first videos. My makeup was horrible, but it was so much fun. Definitely something that I'll never forget. The next question is, what is your favorite color? My favorite color is purple and in specific I love like a very lavender lilac color purple and on the opposite side of the spectrum a very deep warm eggplant plummy purple so purple is definitely my favorite favorite color um, and those two colors in specific for a little bit of highlight so I am going into my Jeffree Star Cosmetics skin frost in the color Eclipse this was a collaboration he did with Manny MUA when I was like all up into the famous makeup gurus. Uh, definitely I knew I needed to have that. So I'm just going to apply that right on the high points of my cheeks. Oh, that's stunning. Oh, I forgot how much I love this. Mm, yes, and then I take my finger, kind of slightly rub onto it and just highlight the bridge of my nose. Cute. Um, I definitely want to intensify the highlight and that's because I'm gonna be adding glitter. So you can do this by taking your highlight, misting a little bit, and then applying it. It just kind of intensifies the look of the shine. Cute. The next question I was surprised to get is are you single and what do you want in a partner? Yes, I am single, like a Pringle, ready to mingle. Um, and what do I look for in a partner? So in a partner, I want someone who is confident in who they are. I want someone who is determined or has a drive. Um, I am always aspiring for something more in my life and again, I am very happy with all of the different milestones that I have achieved, but I'm the kind of person that I always want to work towards being better, whether it be spiritually, mentally, physically, or just in life, like career-wise. So I want someone who has that same drive. Um, definitely someone who is funny because I like to think I'm funny and I like to laugh. So someone who's funny, determined. Um, I mean, handsome isn't gonna be a bad thing to ask for too. And I'm not saying they have to be like, you know, a Greek god. We don't need Hercules, although Hercules would be very nice to have. Um, I just want someone who takes pride in how they look and present themselves. So whether that is in their style and how they dress, um, very clean and sleek, and just the way that they maintain their appearance, that's uh, very much so a turn on for me. And definitely, most importantly, I think someone who is very family oriented. I'm a family kind of person, uh, I have a big family, and I think it's so important to have that uh, relationship with someone who can also enjoy and love and appreciate that. And last but not least, of course, they gotta love Disney. I mean, I, I know people say it shouldn't be a deal breaker, but I almost feel like if they don't like Disney, it's gonna be a very challenging relationship. Unless they're okay with me just frolicking about with all of my friends who love Disney and then coming back and us doing our like personal things together. So um, those are some things that I look for in someone if you're watching. <laughs> we are going to do some lips. I'm going in with my NYX Suede Liner in Soft Spoken. Let's see this color really quick. Oh yeah, okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and define my lips. Now I'm going to go in with the lip liner from MAC and Patrick Starr in Mahogany just to define the outer corners. Now last but not least we are going in with Anastasia Beverly Hills in the color Stripped, this is one of her liquid lipsticks. It is a little bit lighter than my liking, so I'll probably go in and deepen it with the liner, but 
Let's go right in. So now that we have added everything, I'm just gonna go ahead and illuminate this look just a little further with some glitter. And there you have it. This is the completed look. Let me go ahead and finish answering these amazing questions. The next question is, what is your favorite makeup brand? This one is so hard. I love so many brands across the board. I feel like my ride or die though, it's always Anastasia Beverly Hills. Their eyeshadow pigments are absolutely incredible. I love how vibrant they are. Um, in terms of lipstick, you cannot go wrong with MAC Cosmetics. MAC provides the most abundant range of beautiful lip colors and their uh, lip liners are some of my all-time favorites. I really, really, really love Estee Lauder in terms of double wear and the foundation. It just helps to like really smooth out my skin and make everything look good. I don't know, I'm a brand junkie. I love so many different brands. If you guys like makeup, let me know down in the comment section below what your favorite brand is. Also, if you wanna see me like review certain lines or products, I'm all about that. It doesn't necessarily have to coincide with Disney, but in terms of makeup, if you wanna learn more tips or tricks, let me know what you're looking for in terms of videos on this channel. Your favorite Disney ride. This one is easy. Hand Hands down, it is the People Mover. It's my all-time favorite ride and it has been so hard to not ride it because it's down for refurbishment. Um, but I hear within the near future, we're gonna be having that little baby up and running again. So I'll probably ride it the entire day just because I missed it that much. Um, but that's one of my favorite rides. Also, uh, Flight of Passage and Animal Kingdom and Everest, they're kind of always like back and forth tied on my all time favorite ride. But um, those three all together are some of my favorites. Non-Disney, non-beauty hobby, unknown passion. Ooh, this is a very good question. So outside of the Disney realm and outside of the beauty realm, my secret passion, which isn't really a secret, is musical theater. So while I was going to school, I also pursued my side hustle of theatrical performance art and singing. So definitely those are two things that I incredibly am so passionate about. I love singing, I love theater. Some of my favorite things to do are actually go and see live productions, um, to sing, to practice. Those are some of my hidden non-Disney or makeup hobbies. Um, and I'm sure most of you already know that because in some of my videos I'll randomly break out into song and that's just character for me. I mean, that's that's what I do. All right, Splash Mountain or Space Mountain? Ooh, this one is hard. I'm definitely gonna lean more towards Space Mountain. More recently, I've been inspired and maybe because I've been hanging out with my friend Ashley and that's her favorite, but Space Mountain has been like really fun and super energetic. I do love Splash Mountain, don't get me wrong. The entire concept of like going through a log is so super duper fun, but I can't wait for the retheming with the Princess and the Frog. I think my like is gonna go back to Splash Mountain once that theming is finalized and set out for the masses. Dole Whip or Churros. I'm gonna have to go with Dole Whip only because if they're not California Churros, then they're garbage. So the uh, Dole Whip is actually one of my favorite treats to get in the summertime or if it's hot. Um, and they have been doing a great job of creating different variants of it. So there's like a raspberry one, there's a coconut one. Um, I really like the raspberry and classic Dole Whip swirl. That one is so, so, so good. Next question is, what is your favorite part of the Disney community? Honestly, I know I've said it before in terms of like meeting people and the, and the outreach and like creating friendships, but I think another thing that I really enjoy about the Disney community is it's consistently, for the most part, 
positive and magical and reinforces like excitement and dreaming and um, intuition and inspiration. So for me, I really love that part of the Disney community. And of course, making friends with some of these amazing content creators who really just push those values out. So I think that's an awesome thing about the Disney community. That's one thing that drew me to the Disney community was the inspiration and like consistently working towards your dreams and goals. And the last question we have today is, how is Disney during COVID? Are there guidelines, social distancing, masks? Asks. And this is a super special and very great question. Now I know COVID is very evident. It's real. We are living through a pandemic and it's so important that each and every single one of you take the precautions you need to be safe and sanitary during these times. Now, I'm sure most of you are like, well, Jocelyn, you go to the theme park and I don't know if that's necessarily the best thing to do. To each their own and I respect that, but I will say, Disney is doing an incredible job of ensuring sanitation throughout the park. Not only are the cast members equipped with enforcing social distancing, but they're making sure that the park is at its most refined and cleanliest state ever. I think it's super duper important that they're on top of that, but most importantly, the attention needs to be driven to the guest. So I know myself going into the park, I'm gonna make it very evident that if I'm enjoying the experience and enjoying the park, I'm also not gonna hinder anyone else from that. What does that mean? Me following the guidelines, maintaining distancing around those around me, me wearing my mask, doing my duty to ensure no one around me gets hindered if I happen to be sick um, or things of that nature. And honestly, if you're feeling sick, you don't go to the park. So I think at the end of the day, Disney is doing everything they can to ensure those things, but it comes down to the people going to the parks and how people look out for other people. So it's coming down to a more humanitarian thing, making sure that you're taking care of your co-theme park goer, so on and so forth. I think it's very evident that COVID isn't going away anytime soon. I know we have a vaccine now and um, that's just gonna help to prevent the spread of it. But with the ever-changing evolution of this uh, virus, we don't really know the direction it's gonna go. So making sure that you most importantly stay safe and sanitized is in turn going to create a better experience at the theme park. Super great question. Thank you so much for asking that. Um, I encourage each and every single one of you, if you are going to the parks, make sure you do your proper homework and where you're gonna be staying, what sanitation guidelines are there. Is it gonna be something that you can uphold and make sure that you're being safe? Um, if you don't feel safe, at the end of the day, you don't need to go to the park. So with that being said, um, Disney, I think, is doing a great job. During COVID, I have never felt compromised in the parks. Unfortunately, sometimes you will run into the occasional person who's not abiding by those guidelines, like removing their masks or walking or things like that. But Disney is doing a great job of enforcing that now. So if they see you, they can ask you to leave. No questions asked. You're gonna have to follow the rules or you're not allowed to be in the park. So there's that. Thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been such an incredible experience to share with you guys some questions that you have asked me in terms of my one year anniversary. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you guys have any recommendations on what you wanna see from me this year, please let me know down in the comment section below. Slide into my DMs on Instagram. I'll leave that linked down in the description box below. But as always, most importantly, I want you all to stay beautiful. That's inside and outside. But most importantly, have a magical day. Bye.